Welcome to the ADNA Presents. This is Roy Samuelson. In our 150 plus interviews of AD professionals, we've explored their approach and also their passion of audio description. And my favorite part, we've also focused on the implications of AD outside of AD, how their work in AD has affected other aspects of it, as well as how other aspects has affected AD. So comparing and contrasting that gets really exciting. So when I spoke with Heather Foster about her experiences outside of AD and how AD has influenced it, I couldn't wait to interview her again. So here we are, voice talent and screenwriter, Heather Foster. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. So when we're talking about audio description, your growth as a audio description narrator has led to a lot of awareness, not just as a voice talent, but on other aspects of AD. Could you start to talk a little bit about that? Maybe that's a good place to start. Sure. I have always wanted to write and I'm a creative person. I have been since I was a little kid and I have always wanted to be an actor, a singer, a writer, a director. I mean, just, you know, give it to me all right. And I and it's a long story and how I found voiceover. And I love voiceover and I love what I do. And then from that journey found audio description and I really, I love doing it. But there's a lot of the descriptions that I was reading when I'm, I primarily do movies or television shows. So I should start with that. And because of my voice print, more wry comedies or thrillers, you know, it gets kind of dangerous and dark. And some of the things that I do have a lot of description in them because there's a lot of action. So I noticed that I decided to start pursuing the writing aspect, which I, like I said, I've always wanted to do. And when studying how to write a spec script, you know, there's different versions of scripts. So when a script is being sent out to be picked up, if a by the script, it's going to be a little more descriptive than most of the scripts that you find online, which are director scripts. A lot of the stuff has been cut out because they've already decided on a vision and the director has a book that we don't have that has a lot of the set design and some of the actor's notes and things like that in it. So a spec script is going to have a little bit more of that in it. But that being said, it's still very succinct they leave a lot of room to be played with because what you're doing when you're writing a screenplay is you're inviting the reader to see what you see. That was just a big, huge moment for me as an AD narrator. And as a narrator, we also have the added plus of having actual dialogue and sound effects and music and things like that that help our visually impaired viewer to help see the whole picture. Right. But it was just kind of one of those things. And I started to write. I wanted to write it from that point of view that, yes, I'm painting a picture for the person to see in their head as they read it. And that also made me edit more, if that makes sense, because there's an element of play. There's an element of imagination and wisdom that each reader slash viewer is going to bring their own experience in. So I want to implant these images in people's heads, but I also want to leave some room for their interpretation and play. I've really tried to implement that in my writing. When you first started talking about the creative process of writing, one of the things that that stuck out to me was my first assumptions about audio description, that it's bringing the visuals through a script that a narrator talks. And it's so basic. It just sounded like, let's capture this, let's capture this, let's capture this, period, done, end of story. But as you and I have both experienced, when we're reading these audio description scripts, that there is that fascinating element of those choices and Mm -hmm. succinctness, as you had said. Obviously, we're reading between lines of dialogue. We all know it's got to fit, but there's also those choices of words. And one of the things that struck me so powerfully, what you just said, the element of play of imagination and vision that when you are writing this spec script, that you're setting the vision of the set design of all the elements that you want to craft to share with the person that's reading the spec script in that succinctness, you've given room to play. And I find that when an audio description writer has given us a script that is just tasty delicious, it's because Mm -hmm. it allows for that point of view. Let's flip it back and explore a little bit more from your perspective. When you said your point of view that you're as a writer giving to your spec script, how Mm -hmm. has audio description impacted that in the context of what you said, the element of play and imagination and vision? I think that so much can be done with less 
we don't have to know every single thing. And that's part of a spec script, right? We don't need to know what color the wallpaper is. We don't need to know that as far as the story moving forward. Now, maybe if it becomes important later, like if it's a certain color of mauve and I have a mauve dress on and I'm going to hide against it or something like that, then that's important. So that is something that like if I were writing in a screenplay, I don't write set design. That's not part of a spec script. It's a whole team when a movie is made. There's the script that goes out, and then if it decides to be made, then there's there's meetings. The director has a script. The set designer has a script. The cinematographer has a script. They all have their own scripts and the things they do with those because it becomes collaborative later. So when the finished product is out there, I find that the AD narration that I really can like find myself sinking my teeth into is when the elements of the story are there. And I'm part of just filling in the blanks to let that viewer get as much of the whole piece of the creative nugget as they possibly can. And when that all clicks, it tends to be less is more. It tends to be a look or just a flash of something, a glint of a gun or whatever, you know, whatever the word is. I find that there are descriptive words or movement that are a little different. It's a different choice. Um, sometimes I know it's got to be so difficult as an AD writer to find ways to tell the story in different ways. And we don't want to lead our viewers around and make assumptions for them. But I think sometimes the emotionality of something that that's where we come in, I think, as narrators, as we can infuse our emotionality into it, you know, with some parameters, you know, and the Academy Award goes to, <laughs> we don't need that, Heather. But I think that the stuff where I feel like I can really sink my teeth into is where I feel I'm part of the story. And I consume audio description. That's how I prefer to watch film and TV now. If it has it, as long as it's not AI. <laughs> but if it's a human telling me a story, I love listening to it. Plus, I'm a multitasker, so I'm like chopping vegetables or whatever. And then I'll hear the thing, you know, and like, oh, wow. And I love it when I can see it in my head. And I know that it's collaborative. It's been written and said in a way that's going to support the story. Wow, that's great to hear that you're also experiencing it. And with all the different scripts that you've voiced for audio description narration, it sounds like that has had such an impact on the spec script. And I'm curious if you've had any feedback from others, professionals who have read scripts before and what their experience was like reading your script, if there was any specific feedback that they gave to you that you've gotten praise. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> yeah. You know, the script that I'm circulating right now, you know, writing is rewriting. So I'm in the final stages, but it has been sent out to several people, producers, script developers, people pretty high up in the industry. And the response has been really great, especially with the description. They see it. And there's a feel to it. I guess that's the thing is that when I'm writing these descriptions and they're short, the beginning of my particular script takes place. There's a party going on and there are several different things going on within this party. And it's a subdued atmosphere at this particular party. And it's not a celebratory situation. And I wanted the reader to envision moving around this party with soft lighting and muted tones. And there's kind of a grief thing going on throughout. And it's two paragraphs. Now, when it films, it may be five or 10 minutes because of the way it's moving around. But you can feel it and you can do it. And feedback from these people, it's been very favorable that they can see it. They're feeling the movement. They're going around with it. And I talk to writers and visit writers, especially budding writers. And I'm finding that <laughs> most of us overwrite, right? And because of AD narration, we only have so much time. We don't get to talk over words to music. We don't get to talk over dialogue. There are over sound effects or whatever, you know, what it, we have sometimes a very small amount of time to say a whole lot if we can. And to find those precise words to fit in there and tell the story and support the story, that was huge in my writing. Huge. I'm guessing also when you are AD narrator that you're also recognizing great writing. Absolutely. I have my faves that I'm like, yes, you know, and it's funny, too, because like halfway through, I'll know. You can recognize the AD writer. I recognize the writer. I bet this is so and so. And then I get to you know, go, yep. And I always write whoever I'm working with and I'll let them know. Please tell writer X that they nailed it. It was fun to narrate because that's part of it, too. You know, I love voiceover, but I'm finding that the more I do it, voiceover, we're post-production, right? We're the last visit on the hill. 
before it gets shoved out into the world. And by then, they've already determined what they want it to sound like or feel like. The voiceover, whether it's AD or commercial or narration or audio drama, whatever, it's already been decided. We want this voice print and we want it to sound like this and we want this feel to it. And so I'm actually finding that audio scription, I'm able to be more creative in it than a lot of the other genres that I do, to be quite honest. (laughs) And I'm having a lot of fun doing that. What is your contribution as a voice talent in audio description? I love to really be part of it. I always pretend that there's someone right there, like a loved one that is right next to me and I'm telling them what's happening, right? It's somebody that I really care about that I'm watching this with and we are fans together. And sometimes I'll even pre-roll that. And I have to cut things out where I go, I didn't see that coming because I watched the film and I didn't see that coming. And then, you know, you know, because I'll record it as I'm watching. Because I want that element of surprise to be there. I want that element of, oh, gosh. Oh, wow. This is sad. Oh, no. Cut all that stuff out. And I'm right there with a friend and I'm a fan. I know it sounds really crazy, but it's probably of all the kind of voiceover that I do. Now, I'm not an animation. I do some video games. But even within video games, they have like, this is your character and this is how we want you to say this. And you have an idea about how you want to say it. Maybe they'll let you. But usually the one they use is the one that they told you to do. And it's very... Go up here, down here, sideways here. Like the how to say things is very specific. Whereas in audio description, I've been given room to play and to feel and to be part of it. And I feel more present when I'm doing audio description narration. I absolutely do not just hit record and start going blah, 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 blah. blah. I just, I can't, I can't do that. And you can hear when other voice talents are following that playful, that being present, that being part of it. You can tell? Oh, I can tell. And I've got my favorite AD narrators talking to one right now. But I do. I'm always amazed because there are a lot of really great audio description narrators out there. Let's go back to what you said earlier, too, that when it comes to the audio description writing, that is obviously another element in addition to your experience of that. Let's use the word immersion. That When you're in the story, when you're part of the story, as you had said, you're able to really get there. You're able at this point as a professional and as an experienced audio description consumer to be able to sense when something's off, that that can affect your experience. But you're also able to distinguish this is the writing, not the voice, or this is the voice, not the writing, or this is the timing. Something came sooner than I was ready for it or came later than I was expecting, or it was really hard to hear that part because everything else was so loud. All of these elements it sounds like you can really distinguish and say, instead of that was bad AD uh, or that was great AD. It's collaborative, just like a film. It's part of the whole thing. You can have a perfect script. It's just got all the elements of storytelling and a director could get it and just not have the same vision or the acting could be bad or that this could. I mean, I've had experiences as a voice actor doing things where I was directed in the whole I listen to my audition and I'm like, yeah, that's a pretty good audition. And I book it. And then you get in the session and they start from that place where you come in and you're prepared and somebody will direct you to that was the one. And you're thinking, what? That was awful. And then I'm like, I don't even want to tell anybody that I did that. Oh, my gosh. Someone could write an AD narration that is just really great and brilliant. And maybe the narrator didn't connect to it for whatever reason. And that just sounds like they're reading it cue to cue. And conversely, maybe sometimes something may be overwritten and we are having to say things so blinking fast that the only way to do it is sound like you're doing like a legal disclosure. That's unfortunate, too, in the effort to get in all the information that needs to be in. And that's where, like for me, that editing process, what really needs to be in here. Sometimes it needs to be in there. Sometimes it does. We get paid to figure that out. And we get paid to figure out how to do that as best as we can, to try to bring life into that really hard to do things. As a script writer, what do you feel like distinguishes you as a writer? I'm using a comparison here. I think you've shared a lot of what distinguishes you as a writer, your approach based on not only audio description, but also the experience you had researching other writers and and all the work that you've put into it. Is there anything else that you feel has contributed to your writing that we haven't mentioned? Well, for me, I'm a woman in her mid-50s. I've lived a life. Hopefully, I'm halfway through my life. 
But like anyone, by the time you get to my age, there are losses. You know, life is a series of ups and downs. There are interesting things that have happened to me. Some things are very mundane, but I've had a lot of experiences. And so I bring that to the table in my writing. There is a definite point of view in how I write. There is a definite feeling that I've been there and done that. And not in a blasé way, but just truly like I know what I'm talking about. And I'm also, I'm an actor, I'm a voice actor, but I also am an on-camera actor. And all of this works together. None of it is incongruent. One helps me get better in all realms. But my life has been one of my biggest pieces that I can bring. And it goes with the acting. I can empathize with a worried mom or people struggling in a relationship or whatever the loss may be or the joy may be. I can bring my own experience to it and try to subtly add that to my narration. If that's what I need to put forward, a lot of what I get called to do is a lot of subtext. I'm doing a lot of narration subtext. For whatever reason, that tends to be the stuff I am asked to do. And so there's a lot of acting in subtext, having to put that in there. What is the intention of the scene? What are the characters trying to put forward in those furrowed brows? What does that mean exactly? And there's a thousand different ways you can say that that mean it a thousand different ways. I'm not kidding. Sometimes those are the most difficult lines to say. The he shrugged. Well, how the heck did he shrug? It's hard. It's not as easy as I think folks think that it is. It really is. It's very collaborative. And I know that the writer is trying to say it. We don't have access to our writers. We don't have conversations. We get sent the stuff and they go, here you go. And we work hard to do the best we can with it. And I know this because I have a lot of friends who do this. And I try to talk to people in the community about it and listen to the community and find out what people are saying about different audio description and what the community might want from different things. And I try to be part of the team, really. It would be great if I could hang out with the writer and be directed and have it be a big team of like, okay, no, what I meant here was, okay, and like, okay, great. Because there was a writer involved, it's not just a see and say. There's so much more to it if we're telling a story. The AD I do is storytelling. I'm supporting mostly thrillers or wry comedies. It's just because of how my particular voice is put together. And yeah, I'm telling a story. Sometimes it's exciting. Sometimes it's sad. Sometimes it's funny. I can make myself crazy sometimes. Over saying two words, he shrugged, can make me insane because I want it to be right. Whatever the context is, I want him to get it. And it's important to me. Beautiful. Really well said. Thank you. How can we follow you on any public websites or social media? I have a website, heatherfostervoice.com. Heather Foster Voice on Facebook. That's my professional one. And then I have Instagram, Heather Man Foster. I think I have Heather Man Foster on Twitter, too. You could Google me. Gotcha. And that's man, <laughs> M-A-N-N, correct? Yes, yes. And thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much.